I want to take you guys through how I edit my images from front to back, which meaning like raw file, you put it in your software of choice, Lightroom or Capture One. I typically flatten my images first and add a bit of color into it, trying to, to get it a bit softer. And then I build back the contrast in Photoshop. I do this because the curve tool in Photoshop seems a bit more accurate to me. It seems a lot easier to work with. The tone curve in Capture and Lightroom both seem to make the colors get a bit funky. So I feel like I have more control in Photoshop. The first image here that I'm gonna go through, this right now in Capture One is where I get it to be before I bring it into Photoshop. So I'll show you guys the original and you can see it's pretty contrasty. The highlights are a bit harsh. And what I do here is I warm up the image here a bit in the highlights and then I'm adding a bit of blue in the uh, undertones here. You can see in that that bathing suit, a little bit of black there. It's not very noticeable, but I will take you through what I do. And this was the final image here. So this is, I guess, what my desired outcome was. All right, so I'm going to clone this so we could start new. Clone variant, cool, I'm gonna bring it back to the start. And this one, I put a preset that I made on it. So, so I will take you guys through bone scratch. Let's fucking figure it out. First thing I do typically is I'll lower the contrast and get the brightness to somewhere that I want it to be. Um, the other most important thing is getting your white balance somewhere where you'd like it to be. I like that right there. Uh, I could see a bit of magenta down here. And there's two ways to get rid of colors. You either add other colors that are the opposite, or you go into your color slider and you find the color that you don't like and you subtract it. Um, I find in Lightroom, subtractive colors works really, really well. So you don't like a color, pull it back a little, desaturate that color. In Capture One, I find that subtractive coloring does not work as well. You really need to know your color science in adding the colors um, to get rid of the opposite color. For example, if I have too much red in a mid-tone, I'm going to add green in that mid-tone to pull back that red. If you have a color wheel, that's, uh, I guess, the right way to, to do it, but I, I, you add the opposites. And you can see it right here in the color balance. So we've gotten our white balance set to where we like it, and I'm seeing like there's a bit of like red deep in the shadows. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna go over to blue. And I'm being a little aggressive with it here. I also don't like how some of these blacks look like they're, they're too dark. So you could pull up here a little and your shadows just a pinch, and you could pull back on your mid-tones a bit. And now I feel like the image overall is getting a little too bright. So I'm gonna go up here into my levels and pull down the highlights a pinch. Cool, so. We have a bit of a difference here, and the main difference is this highlight layer. I added a layer to add the highlights and go super, super uh, warm. And I'll take you through that. This is something that you can do in Photoshop as well, but you cannot do it in Lightroom, uh, unfortunately. I'll rename this highlights. And first thing I do here in highlights is I'll drag it down because what I wanna do is see these highlights be more readable shoulder, this highlights on her hand and arm or hip, and some on her face. Um, knowing what you want out of the image before you edit it is really important. I typically, if I do a shoot, I'm like, oh, I want this to be super warm. Or sometimes I do a shoot and I'm like, I want this to be super cold. Or sometimes I do a shoot and I'm like, I want this to be true to life. I want this to feel the temperature that it is outside. Um, typically in the summer, my editing gets warmer and typically in the winter, my editing gets colder. The color temperature, I mean, here we're inside, so you, you have a ton of options. I don't want to make this too yellow, but I also don't want it to be too magenta-y. But right here is looking pretty crazy. But here's where the cool part comes in. You have a luminosity range right over here. Uh, Luma range is just contrast. I, I'm trying to think of an easy way to explain this would be you have your blacks all the way to the left and you have your highlights all the way to the right. And it's really just a scale 
of dark to light. And we can change where our color is applied based on how bright or how dark something is. So I'll click Luma Range. Over here you'll see your darks. Over here you'll see your highlights. So if I wanted this to only be in the darks, I will slide this all the way over. And you could see like, if I do this really slowly, you can see that it's only applying to the darks. But the way I typically do this, um, right now we're working with highlights, I do it for shadows, highlights, and midtones, just depending on what I need. Um, right now we're just feathering it. So I want it all the way in the highlights, and I want to feather it down towards the midtones, and then eventually towards the shadows. You can also click here to display the mask, and you could see like, oh, it's bleeding into my shadows too much, or it's bleeding into my highlights too much. I'm gonna keep it just out of the shadows a little bit. And then you could come back here to see like what it's, what it's looking like. And it looks kind of yellow and is making her skin kind of froggy, I guess. Like she kind of looks like a f like frog skin tone. But when you reduce the opacity over here, it does help just crush those highlights a bit. And the reason I do this is because I want my images to look more like film. In analog photography, the film stocks handle highlights much better. So even in this highlights thing, I could come down here and reduce the highlights a pinch too. Um, you could even do that in, in your dynamic range on your base layer. Um, and I know this, like I'm not doing this in uh, Lightroom right now, but most of the same exact things apply in Lightroom uh, as they do in Capture One. The only difference is you can't have that layer. So what you can do instead of having that layer is just try and do that all on one layer. The difference for me is I like to have more control. Um, and I like that if I, if I don't like the result, I can easily just delete that layer. Like just click it and delete it. And then I'm back to where I was. There are a few other things I like to do in capture before I bring my image to Photoshop. And one of them is reducing the clarity a little bit. I typically would do like nine or 10 ish, um, sometimes 12, because I want to just soften that skin up. And I really don't like when I can tell that an image is super, super digital. Sometimes I get rid of the sharpening entirely. I'll add a little bit of fine grain. Um, you can do the same in Lightroom, just add a little grain. Uh, let's see. I also, like to, depending on the image too, um, this one could actually use a negative uh, vignette or vi I have no idea how to say that. <laughs> I'll add a little bit more. Like sometimes I like to like clear up the image. I think for this one, I'm gonna actually bring in a little bit of vignette here. And now that I like this image, I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. I hope this is not too hard to follow because I'm trying to move fast because I fucking hate 400 minute YouTube videos on how to edit something. I want it to be quick, quick, quick. Show me the tool and we're done. Uh, so we're in Photoshop. Gonna go up here, we're gonna bring in our curve. This is the first thing I do every time I get an image in here. I'm building back that contrast. Right now I'm dropping down the shadows a bit. Um, I'm gonna go here towards the highlights. I'm gonna bring those up a little. Might even bring my shadows up a little bit. And I'm gonna pull the highlights again down over here. I guess this would be like brighter tones to mid tones. But I feel like this is what I always consider middle. Cool, so somewhere around there. Overall, I'm really liking this. Um, I feel like the yellows might be a bit too punchy. So you could add a little magenta here. You could, I mean, if you do this, it'll make them darker. And if you do this, we can get rid of a little bit of that yellow because cyan is the opposite of yellow. Uh, the reds look pretty damn good to me. I almost want to see a little bit more, a little bit more red, and then just a little bit darker, and let's see what happens here. 
Cool, so now I'm like really liking this image, but it feels like the the color's a bit too saturated. So typically what I do here, and I have actions built to do this stuff, but I will show you from scratch. Add a layer, which is this button right down here. Press shift, delete. Go to 50% gray, okay. Now you go to filter, noise, add noise. Cool, that's way too fucking high. Uh, we'll come down to like 18, I guess. We're gonna go Gaussian, monochromatic, okay. Now, some people use soft light, but I like overlay. Way too punchy, so we'll go to opacity over here. And we're gonna reduce it. And I mean, we could reduce it a lot, but let's just see like what it's doing. Cool, that's not terrible because we're gonna double this in a second. There's also another cool trick where, let's just bring it up to 100 just so you could see this. You double click the layer. And again, just like in Capture, you can change where that grain is applied so in a film image, in an analog image, you will see more grain in the shadows than you will in the highlights. Um, and this makes sense because like the film is trying to expose for that. Um, so we can try and emulate that. Obviously it's not going to look the same because adding noise versus having natural grain, that's a chemical process, is much different. But we're going to go over here to the highlights and we're going to drag that film grain out of the highlights. So now, like, I mean, I'd like to feather it a little bit more. Cool. So now when you see the grain, it's primarily only in the shadows and fades into the highlights. I mean, you could even do it all the way here where it's like almost the entire way. So you still see a bit of grain in that highlight. And now it's like, say it's too much grain, now we can reduce it. We know exactly where it's hitting. Cool, I might go down a little. Super subtle. I'm gonna spare you guys with skin retouching because it takes me forever because I'm fucking terrible at it. Um, cool, I like all of this, but I still feel like the image might be a little too flat. Um, and I feel like the color might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to reduce the vibrance and the saturation by four, just like a little bit. What I'm gonna do is kind of like one of my weirdest tricks, but if I want an image to be punchier, I want it to kind of like look good on Instagram, this might not be the best practice for printing, but I will press Command, Shift, Option, the letter N, and then the letter E. So N will duplicate and then E will copy all these adjustments that are above onto that layer. I'll reduce the opacity, and then you could see there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, once I'm done with that, if I feel like there still needs to be a bit more contrast, I'll come here and here. I don't really like to mess with the blacks too much because it could really easily get muddy. Now I think this image is looking almost done. I'll reduce the contrast there a little bit just to kind of get it in that sweet spot. Um, you don't have to collapse the layers. I know some photographers save their PSDs from every single file. I'm not the most organized photographer in the world, so I will collapse it. But yeah, this is the final image. And then I export, I go to File, Export, Save for Web. All right, so here is the final image. Mm, let's give this a five. Cool. And we will compare it to the original. Not a massive difference. Like I thought that was going to be a lot more of a difference. Um, obviously, I would have done some skin retouching here, but you could see that there is a, a difference in the color of the hair is a bit more blue. There's some of the shadows over here are a bit more blue. The bathing suit is a bit more blue. And uh, the skin looks a bit more evened out because we crushed the highlights a bit. We pulled them back. 
Um, a bit more red underneath here and less of like a yellowy color. But all in all, I like the end result. Let me know if this helps. If you guys have more questions. And I'm super keen to edit some of your images. And you guys can send me a few images. And I'll edit three of them. And let me know what you want the end result to look like. And I will try to show you how to get there. Peace, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for commenting on that post and saying that you wanted me to make something like this. Peace.